Hi! In this video, we'll talk about the uses of computer programs. How are they used and where are they used? So, what are computer programs used for? And the short answer is everything. They're pretty much used for everything. But let's dive into this and see exactly uh, what computer programs are used for. So, at a high level, what do programs do? That's a good first question to ask. What do programs do? And really, at the core of it, all computer programs do are implement algorithms. Now, what are algorithms? Well, an algorithm is a self-contained, step-by-step set of instructions that solve a problem. And we see algorithms everywhere, not just in computers. A recipe is an algorithm. It shows you step-by-step -step instructions for how to bake a dish. Directions to a location, that's an algorithm. You give step-by-step -step instructions on how to get somewhere. And programs are another example of algorithms. All programs are implementing algorithms. For example, if we wanted to make an algorithm to do the hokey pokey, we give a step-by-step -step set of instructions to do the hokey pokey. You put your left hand in, you take your left hand out, you put your left hand in, you shake it all about, and so on. We could give an algorithm to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, what do you do? Well, repeat the following twice. Put one slice of bread on the table. So now we have two. Now open the peanut butter jar. Now open the jelly jar. Now grab a knife, and so on. We give very deliberate step-by-step set of simple instructions to solve a problem. In Carol, when we were writing our Carol programs, we saw a lot of Carol algorithms. For example, if we wanted to make Carol move to a wall, all we have to do is, while the front is clear, move. And Carol knows how to check if the front is clear, and Carol knows how to move. So this is a complete algorithm. So these are all examples of algorithms, but these aren't programs. These are just the ideas. These are the solutions to the problems at hand. Programs take these algorithms and put them into computer code. They put them in a programming language that implements the algorithm. So algorithms turn into programs. Programs implement algorithms. Algorithms are the step-by-step -step instructions. Programs put these instructions into a computer executable form. And there are algorithms for everything these days. People are coming out with crazier and crazier algorithms that do really cool things. There's algorithms for sorting the songs in your library. There's algorithms for searching the internet for a specific image or a specific word. There's algorithms that help a computer recognize faces. There's algorithms that help a computer recognize speech. For playing a video or a song, for displaying colors on your screen, these are all algorithms that are used by a lot of different programs. And the idea here is a lot of times we reuse pre-existing algorithms as building blocks in our larger programs. By combining these pre-existing algorithms that we know to be correct, we put these together and we make a brand new algorithm and this helps guarantee that the new algorithm is correct because we used correct algorithms as the building blocks. For example, when we were writing Carol programs, a lot of times we had to make Carol move to a wall. That was a very common step in the larger programs. If Carol's running a race or if Carol is finding a wall, always we need Carol to move to a wall. So this was an algorithm that we reused a lot in different Carol programs. So this is a building block for larger algorithms. So that's really what programs are doing, or they are implementing algorithms, and we're getting better and better algorithms every day. So how are programs developed and used? So they're, they're developed and used in a variety of different ways, depending on the intended purpose, depending on the goals of the programmer. For example, if you're writing a program and you only intend for it to be used one time just for yourself, you're probably going to develop that program way differently than if you're trying to write a program that will be used for years and years by millions of people. In the second case, you're probably going to have a team of people working on this together. You're going to make sure that the code is very clear and readable and it's able to function for years to come. Whereas the first one, you're just throwing it together. So depending on what the end use case is, you're going to develop it differently. And what are, what's the motivation behind programs? Like, Why do people write programs? Well, programs are usually developed for several reasons. Sometimes they're developed to express creativity, such as digital art. Sometimes they're developed just to satisfy your personal curiosity. Maybe you want to learn how to make a website or you want to learn how to use code to do something that you couldn't do before. Uh, sometimes programs are used to create new knowledge, such as visualizing the crime data of a city to see the safest and most dangerous locations. That's new knowledge about the world that we didn't have before. And now we have that because of a program. And a lot of times programs are written to satisfy a common need. Organizations like CodeHS and Netflix we are constantly writing programs to satisfy 
needs that a lot of people have. Code HS satisfies the need of people needing to learn to program. Netflix satisfies the need of, there's a lot of people that want to watch movies over the internet. So a lot of times we find a common need and we write a program that meets that need. What's cool is a lot of times additional uses may be realized separate from the original intended purpose of the program. For example, I'll take an example from my life. When I was in college, a couple friends and I made a program that visualized crime data in a city, and the intended purpose was so that you could find the safest possible spot to park your car. You didn't want your car broken into. And so it would visualize as a heat map all the most dangerous places in the city. But when people started using it, we found a lot of bonus uses. For example, people would use the program to find the safest route to walk home, or they would use the program to find the safest neighborhood to live in. So there's a lot of bonus uses that can come out of a program after you write it. Another really great use, great feature of programs is that once a program is made, the program itself or the results of running the program, this new knowledge that's been created because of running the program, that can be rapidly shared with a large number of users. And because of this, this rapid sharing can have widespread impact on people, on organizations, and on society. For example, Tesla spent a long time developing software, developing a program that allowed all of their cars to drive themselves. So people were driving their own cars for a long time, but once the software was ready and tested and good to go, Tesla pushed out an update to every car overnight. And the next morning, all Tesla cars were able to autopilot. All Tesla cars were able to drive themselves after just getting a software update overnight. So this is an incredible part of programs is it's not a physical product that you need to ship across the country. Instead, it's, it's an idea. It's an idea that can be downloaded by all these computers across the globe and instantly everyone has access to it. And we see that programs have a huge influence on other fields. Advances in computing have generated an increased creativity in other fields. We've seen how it's affected transportation. Cars are now driving themselves. But music is another great example. Because of programs, we now have electronic music. We're now able to add digital effects on top of traditional music. We can make music visualizers. Music visualizations are now a huge part of concerts and most music libraries. And because of the internet, it's very easy for musicians to collaborate on music and share their music with each other and with the world. So we really see that programs are influencing other fields in a big way. You name the field, programs are playing a part in that field. So where are programs used? This is another great question. And the short answer is everywhere. Programs are used everywhere. But again, let's, let's break this down a little bit. Let's see some specific places that programs are used. Well, of course, programs are used on our computers, laptops, desktops, tablets. These are all running a lot of programs. And we can write our own programs to run on these machines to do new things. But they're also used in our phones and our smartwatches and toys, cars, appliances. These are all running programs. The difference is they're not, we're not always able to write our own programs on these machines like we can with the computers. They come with a prepackaged program that is the only program it can run. But these computers are all running programs. A programmable coffee maker that does certain things when you press certain buttons. A robotic pet dog that maybe reacts to your touch or reacts to light. These are running programs so that the computer knows what to do. Programs are being used in planes and cars to help them autopilot. They're being used in defibrillators and pacemakers to monitor uh, the functioning of the device and make sure that it's working properly. We see that programs are being used in art. They're being used in music. They're being used to help the agriculture industry. Programs are used to help health and medicine. We can give abilities to people who didn't have them before, or we can model the outbreak of disease and help areas that are in danger. And of course, programs are being used to connect us. So really we see programs have a widespread use across all fields and they are really changing the way that we approach problems. So the question I want you to reflect on is how do you use programs in your day-to-day -day life? What are some programs that you're constantly using? How have they changed your life positively and negatively? And how do you go about using these programs?